everybody, it's your old pal Scruffy here and welcome to the channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about a recent leak on a Kopi Cafe episode. Rob and Josh in their leaks area, uh, they released some new PC requirements and I have to say, uh, they've beefed them up a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we had some PC requirements released a while back on the Kopi Wiki. Uh, the Kopi Wiki has been updated. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. With that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the leak and check out these system requirements. All right, so I'm just gonna run through these real quick because I know you're probably wondering, what does it all mean? If I've gotta buy one, if I'm gonna build one, what does that mean for my price point? What are we looking at range-wise? We'll get to that here in just a second. Uh, but as you can see here, they gave us minimum recommended and best experience PC specs. Uh, operating system, they're all the same, Windows 10 or 11. For the minimum, they're recommending a Core i5-10400 or AMD Ryzen 5 3600, an NVIDIA RTX 2060 or AMD RX 5600 XT, also 16 gigabytes of RAM, 100 gigabyte SSD, and they're saying that this is not gonna offer 4K at 60 frames per second, uh, but my guess is if you're doing 1080p, this'll be just fine. Moving on to the recommended PC specs, we've got the Intel Core i7-10700K or AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. That paired with an NVIDIA RTX 3080 or AMD RX 6800 XT. Gonna need a little bit beefier for that middle tier than previously announced. Also 16 gigs of RAM, 100 gigabyte SSD storage, and again, uh, I, they're saying it may not offer 4K at 60 frames per second. You might be able to do 4K at 30 frames per second, or you might be able to get away with 1440p at 60 frames per second. For the best experience tier, they're recommending an Intel Core i9-12900K or an AMD Ryzen 7 5900X. Also, an NVIDIA RTX 4800 or AMD RX 7900 XTX. Now, that is the most recent generation of video cards, and they're not cheap. We'll get to those here in just a minute, but uh, if you're going for this best experience, you're gonna need to drop a little coin unless you've already got something ready to go. In the RAM department, they're suggesting we up it to 32 gigabytes on this one, and still 100 gigabyte solid state drive, and they're saying that these specs should offer 4K at 60 frames per second. Now, remember, I've talked about this in the past. It all centers around what resolution you're going to be gaming at. So it really, believe it or not, starts with the monitor. I know everybody says start with the GPU when you're building a game PC, but I tell you to start with the monitor. Are you gonna be gaming on 1080p monitor? Are you gonna be uh, on a 1440p monitor? Or are you gonna be trying to go at the highest resolution possible, a 4K monitor? If you're wondering how much this will set you back, uh, I went to an online site where you can get off the shelf PCs where you can get custom built PCs. And then I went to my little PC part picker, which is what I use when I'm picking my parts for building PCs. Wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of what kind of price points you might be looking at so that you can reasonably start budgeting in case you need to uh, buy or build a new system. Now, we're not gonna go over the custom PC builds just because those can vary widely. And I wasn't able to find every single spec exactly the same, but we did our best to come as close as possible. And we're gonna run through all those tiers right now. When I checked current pricing on CyberPower PC, I came across these three models. As you guys can see, they range from about 925 to 999. Now remember, you're gonna have to factor in shipping as well as tax. I would budget around $1,000 to $1,100 if you're looking to buy one of the minimum system requirement pre-built PCs. Now, 
If you're looking to save a little bit of money and you happen to have the skills, maybe you've built a PC before, or maybe you've swapped out some parts and you're looking to build your very first PC, you can save a little money by building it yourself. I put together this PC parts list, which has the equivalent of the minimum system requirements. And that one came out around $700. Now, once again, you may need to pay for shipping and or tax. So I budget about $800 for that lower tier that they are recommending for cornucopias. Now, as we move up to the recommended tier, the prices are definitely gonna increase. I wasn't able to find one with the 3080 card on this particular website, but I did find one that's got the 3070 Ti. And if you go to other sites, the 3080 should be relatively close, might be a little bit more, but at least this does give you a ballpark idea of what you might be paying. Gaming PCs with the 3070 Ti are running in the neighborhood of 1925 to about that 1985 range. I would go ahead and throw another two or $300 on top of that because remember, uh, this is the 3070 Ti, which actually should give you pretty close performance to the 3080. But if you want that 3080 that they are actually talking about in the requirements document, then you're gonna have to pay a little bit more for it plus you need to include shipping and handling. Once again, if you feel confident in building your own PC, I've put together a parts list for that as well. And if you can look down towards the bottom, you are saving a little bit more money by coming in at about $1,500. Now, if you're looking to go on the super high end, that's right, 4K gaming, they are saying that you are going to need a current generation either AMD or NVIDIA graphics card. And these don't come cheap, boys and girls. Yeah, they raised the prices recently, so get ready for a little bit of sticker shock. That's right, $3,000 is probably the ballpark you are looking at. As you can see here, they've got one as low as $29.15 for sale, uh, but they can go up as high, re really as high as you want them, because this is just the uh, 4080 from NVIDIA. I wasn't able to sort by just the 7900 XTX, uh, because it was throwing in all the 7900 XTs and uh, the, the difference is real right there. And we're not even talking about the 4090 cards. So uh, yeah, if you're wanting to go big or go home, you're gonna have to drop a little bit of coin. However, if you think you can build it yourself, you can bring that in for the cool, cool price of 2,067. So if you got the skills to pay the bills, then uh, you can build your own and maybe save a little bit of money. Now I wanna be clear. You can spend as much as you want on any of these systems. What I tried to do is go, while still satisfying all of the system requirements in each tier, what is the minimum amount I could spend? So when you're seeing these prices for building, they're not necessarily the parts and components that I would recommend per se. However, I didn't get any trash in there. It's just there are a few places that I'm going, okay, the difference is maybe 50 bucks to beef it up another level and I went ahead and just went with the cheapest. So these are kind of the basement prices as far as building your own. Now, according to the Kopi Wiki, they say it should be possible to run cornucopias on other PC specifications than those listed above. However, limited testing will be done on older PCs due to the demand for graphics and multiplayer. What does this mean? Well. It means it might work. <laughs> it will probably work on machines with lower specifications. However, you're probably gonna have to turn the settings all the way down and it's possible it could be a little choppy, especially when getting into multiplayer modes like the upcoming racing. Now, if you're running 1080p or less and you're okay with probably closer to 30 or 45, maybe 60 frames per second if you're lucky, you might can get by with an NVIDIA GTX 1070 or AMD RX 5600 XT, as well as a really old i7 or AMD Ryzen 7. Uh, RAM, they're still recommending the 16 gigabytes of DDR or greater and a 100 gigabyte storage hard drive. So what can you pick one of those up for? Used on eBay? Well, I'm glad you asked. I found a couple of 
used gaming rigs with the GTX 1070. However, those are going for about $450 when you include shipping. So there you go. If you don't already have a PC, maybe you're on a Mac, maybe you just have been following the project on mobile and you are looking to build or buy a gaming rig to play Corticopius, probably looking at somewhere between $450 and $3,000. <laughs> I know, that's a big window. All depends on the quality that you need to have for your gaming experience. Now remember, every game is different and every card's a little bit different. And since the game hasn't come out, we haven't had a chance to test these. These are kind of general guidelines. Once we do get testing for the racing, which by the way, should be the most graphic intensive portion of the game. You know, lots of little polygons flying at you really, really fast should put those video cards especially to the test. I'll give it a test with my current 3060 Ti and that should give us a baseline. I've got another website that'll allow me to compare the other cards. So we should be able to kind of reverse engineer uh, and fine tune this a little bit better. But if you're looking to build a rig right now, hopefully this will help you get an idea on how much to budget. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them for me in the comments below. Also, if you found any of this video informational, go ahead and like and subscribe. Turn on those bell notifications if you want to be notified next time I come out with a video and have a great rest of your day.